Mark, did you want to put the slide? Yeah, let's the slide let's, yeah. show up. Sure. There we go. Debbie, you're on. Okay, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as the slide states, this is a discussion and Q&A, so we definitely welcome your questions um, of the movie, The Story of Plastic. And even if you haven't seen it, no worries. We're going to be talking about a lot of other things as well. Um, this was organized. It's co-hosted by the North Fork Audubon Society and North Fork Environmental Council. And it's an ongoing effort through the Prep Long Island or Plastic Reduction and Elimination Project, which is a collaborative effort that uh, North Fork Environmental Council and North Fork Audubon um, has been working on over the past 18 months. So we have met for, for a long time, we met on a monthly basis. We um, really got a lot of work done in terms of um, uh, organizing presentations and um, doing presentations to different groups and libraries. We um, also had some lined up um, and unfortunately the, um, uh, the uh, COVID situation kind of um, put a damper on things. So we've had to kind of suspend those efforts. But again, this is part of all of that. Um, we have been involved with um, speaking at different meetings um, uh, regarding um, legislation. And we have um, been educating the public on alternatives. We have a Facebook page called uh, Sustainable North Fork. And you will find lots of information about plastic alternatives on that Facebook page. So um, thank you again so much for, for joining us. I'm hoping that um, you have lots of questions tonight and um, we will do our best to answer them. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Suffolk County Legislator Kara Hahn, who is the chairwoman of the County Legislators, excuse me, Legislatures Environment Planning and Agriculture Committee and Kara also um, is the uh, leader of the Single Use Plastic Reduction Task Force, which is um, organized on the county level. So we are very, very happy to have you join us tonight. And um, Kara will be sharing with us, I'm sure, um, some of the work that the task force is doing. Um, we'd like to ask you about some of the goals and see what your future plans are as well. So thank you very much for all the good work that you have been doing, and um, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. <coughs> just let me know when it's, yeah, oh, I don't ahead, have Karen. my agenda up, so when it's my turn, just, you know, make sure I know. <laughs> oh, it'll be clear. Um, okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm going to, uh, two housekeeping items real quick is, um, when you have questions, drop them into chat, the chat box, and they'll go to our co-hosts, uh, Dawn, is our admin at the at NFPC. Uh, Debbie will see them and I will see them and Dawn will call them at the end for the Q&A and uh, give them to the people who uh, can answer them best or the people, many people. Um, the second thing, please do not spend any time taking notes. All of the links, the documents, um, all of the, uh, the video itself is gonna be on our YouTube channel, the NFPC YouTube channel for people who couldn't make it tonight or for people who were here and wanted to take notes. Um, we've taken care of all that and we've got all the documents available in Dropbox in a public uh, file. So um, for those of you who have not seen the, um, the film, uh, I was reminded of Barry Commoner's uh, Rules of Ecology. Everything comes from somewhere that nothing is free and extraction has a cost. Everything has to go somewhere and there is no way. We certainly know that because the snow in the Great Pyrenees is bringing down bits of plastic. Uh, they found plastic bags at the bottom of the Marianas and the Tonga, Tonga Trench. Uh, and of course, it's in our land and our beaches and everything else. So our air, our water, and our land are all affected by this greatly, by this pollution. Everything's connected to everything else. Uh, I can't get into systems theory, but we need to think holistically going forward. Uh, the, the old thing about a butter, butterfly sneezes in Europe and an American catches a cold. Na nature knows best. It's older than us, and we're getting lots of feedback. Uh, the, the current world that we're in 
The Earth system is about a billion years old and it's developed to where we are. And we're, we're spending 150 years to really interrupt it and, uh, and disrupt it. We're going to be asking, what can we do at every turn? Uh, we're talking about federal, uh, state, county, local, and personal efforts. Uh, again, the uh, real quick hit about the movie, we're stuck in a linear consumption model uh, around the world, not just American capitalism, but around the world. We've been externalizing the costs of extraction. We've been privatizing the profits. Think Nestle, Coca-Cola, and I'm not bashing them necessarily, but uh, between those and big oil, uh, plastic is part of that entire industry. We are socializing the true costs in social, economic, and environmental impacts. Fracking and cracking is almost a Hail Mary pass for the oil companies because they see the, the writing on the wall that we're going to renewables and rebuildables and that there's going to be less demand for coal, oil, and gas as we go forward. And plastic is their, their foot in the door to the future to get their money in. Uh, and the last thing we need to talk about is bending the curve to a circular economy. Nature works on a circular system. Leaves drop, they form mulch. New creatures, new plants grow. We don't do this. So uh, if you think about Janine Benyus and uh, biomimicry, that is what we really need to adopt. On the federal, I'm gonna skim over this very quickly when I get to Kara. Uh, Congress has got a Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act out there right now, and I've got the House and Senate numbers. They were just introduced. It has to do with both pre and post production of plastic. And just like we got rid of microbeads for cosmetics, uh, we're looking to do this so that they must bring the plastic back to their facilities and use it either to upcycle or recycle or, or whatever have you. Coca Cola has uh, stated that by 2025 or 2030 that they will be taking all their bottles back. I don't know how they're planning on this, but uh, we need to keep an eye on that. Uh, Debbie and I have been involved with the Product Stewardship Institute over the last couple of years. They were involved with the restaurants out on the North Fork on the East End, uh, as far as uh, recyclables and compostables. And their, the Product Stewardship Institute's basic function is not just plastic packaging and paper products, but also with water and air quality and quite a few other things that are impacted by industry. So if you look at this, uh, I've got to find a better picture, but um, if you look at where we are right now, we talk about plastic bag bands on the left at the top in green. That's where we stop the post-production so we don't allow them to be brought into our community. The microbead bands that I mentioned before are in the pre-production part of this where we stop them from being made in the first place. Although the, um, the little uh, pellets that are, um, that are used for plastic are being dumped into a river in Texas right now by the trillions and they can't stop it. Uh, all of this business about recycling and everything post production and post waste. If you look down at the recycling box, that yellow recycling box, we need to take that curve right there and point it the other way and back up into plastic use and production. So this is what we'd be talking about as far as either bending the curve or, or flattening uh, or, or actually rounding out our linear consumption into uh, into circular production use and reuse. Uh, New York State, again, briefly, uh, we've got the bag ban and straws on request. The Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act has to do with uh, not just plastic and pollution, but equity, social equity. We posted a letter to Commissioner Segos from the DEC on our uh, initial uh, invite and that will be available again uh, we're, we're alarmed that the rollback of all these um, bring your own bags and bring your own containers to the restaurant and all of this has been interrupted and there's a lot of bad information out there i know carrie you can talk about that for us when we get to you next uh, the environmental advocates of new york are not just involved with plastic but also with water and equity and lots of other things uh, all of these people are involved with the Climate Protection uh, Act, the Community Protection Act, and this is only one part of it. They have a comprehensive plan and demands, and there's a thing called extended, extended producer responsibility. Um, in Sweden, you call the people when your, your washing machine is done at its life cycle of 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 years, 
and the, the washing machine, people come back, they strip it down, they put new skins on it, they rebuild the motors and put them back out into, into sale. So this is the kind of thing that's being done. They're doing it with rugs. Uh, carpeting is one of the worst offenders of, of landfill. Um, and this is, again, extended producer responsibility. It's got to go to every industry. So, Kara, uh, you know, you've, um, you've done a wonderful job. That's how I met, uh, met you at the legislature. And um, here we are. I may have to ask her to can unmute you. herself. Yes? No, she can hear you. Yeah, she needs to unmute. There we Sorry. go. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I didn't want to make noise in the background and, um, <laughs> and distract everybody, but uh, I apologize for that. So um, you put up the bill, uh, some bill numbers, and it's funny, I, I never know the bill numbers, which one, which number attaches to which, but I'll talk about what we've been working on uh, at the legislature. The committee that I chair, it, it began, I, first of all, um, hello. My name's Kara Hahn. I'm the deputy presiding officer at the Suffolk County Legislature, and my district that I represent is uh, Legislative District 5, Stony Brook, Setauket, Port Jefferson area. Um, and I became a legislator in 2012. January 2012 was when I began, so this is my ninth year uh, now. And when I began, I was initially started as chair of the environment committee um, my district has a legacy of leadership on the environment um, steve engelbright vivian valoria fisher nora bredis um, all were my predecessors in this seat and um, there's a huge legacy there as to what uh, we've been able to accomplish in suffolk county government for the protecting the environment um, the committee started out being called Environment Planning and Agriculture. This year it switched and they've combined Environment Parks and Agriculture, so it's still EPA. Um, and the planning function is now, I also chair a second committee, which is Economic Development and Planning. Uh, and so ju just to correct uh, that slide from earlier. Uh, talking about plastics. Um, you know, as chair of the Environment Committee, I participated a lot in cleanups, and you showed them on your, your chart earlier as, as the end cycle. of that's, We don't want to get to a place where plastic, um, people use it and discard it, and then we're finding it on, on our beaches, on our roadways, um, in parking lots, um, clogging up storm drains. Uh, that's really what we want to prevent, but it really did come to my attention um, as I would do cleanups um, in the community as chair of the Environment Committee and with my daughter, who uh, is now 13 years old, but was much younger when I started this, and I would bring her with me to cleanups, and ev it seemed like everything we were picking up was plastic. Um, I did a ban before the federal government did the microbeads ban we banned it here in in suffolk county um microbeads in personal care products um the sale of personal care products that contain microbeads and um that was one of the earliest items at the time or probably even before that i did try to ban styrofoam which is one of the um in um you know, re, uh, takeout containers. Um, and it's one of the items that actually got passed this past year in 2019. But in 2014, first tried to make the push to do it, and there was not support at the legislature to do that. And so there has been a real, and you all have probably felt it, you've all probably seen it, um, there's really been a sea change, uh, no pun intended, in the public's um, you know, willingness and recognition of the problem. Um, and I think there have been a number of organizations, the ones that you've mentioned that you all are part of, um, have been a big part of getting the word out. Um, Ocean Conservancy, um, Surf Rider, numerous, numerous organizations, um, videos going viral, um, pulling the straw out of the turtle's nose. 
um, videos and images going viral of, of nets around um, seals and, and turtles and other birds killing them and, and opening up um, the necropsies of animals um, where plastic has been the cause of the deaths of their deaths have been, you know, um, but the organizations that have, have gotten those images as painful as they are to see have gotten them into the public eye have really made a difference and so i think um you know when mark asked me to discuss how long it took for these three bills or four bills to pass and i'll i'll outline them in a moment um i really use the the time when i introduced the styrofoam ban originally 2013 2014 um until 2019 it took it took that long and there but there was significant change that happened in that time in terms of public opinion that was able to help push my colleagues so i partnered um in 20 beginning of 2018 um i believe it was yes we created the single use plastic reduction task force and that was a bill that i authored um, to create a task force of individuals from across Suffolk County to tackle single-use plastics and to just come at, find ways that, first of all, the county would have authority to act on, but also that we thought we could accomplish. And we partnered with Surf Rider Foundation and a number of others to um, piggyback on their um, strawless summer campaign in the summer of 2018 um where uh they were working with many other organizations on the east end on the south fork to uh have restaurants sign on and agree to go strawless uh, plastic strawless it could it could have reusable straws of course um and so we piggybacked on that and we tried to get that countywide. and we um the task force took on the um strawless suffolk we expanded it from strawless summer to strawless suffolk and then we um, authored the legislation. I can't remember if it's 1112, 1113, or 1121, but the straw by request only policy that did pass the Suffolk County Legislature. Um, and so now is the law. So restaurants, sit down restaurants uh, in Suffolk County um, must wait for a customer to ask for a straw. They cannot provide it, uh, they cannot just provide it on the table they cannot provide it in a drink and they cannot ask the customer if they want a straw they have to wait for the customer to request it when they do provide a straw it cannot be plastic um and then i know one of the follow-up questions going to be around the compostable and the definition and unfortunately i don't have the exact wording in front of me and yes it's a problem um we recognize that we don't have the true composting happening um here we don't have that infrastructure but we're hopeful that um this is one of the things i'm working on i created a recycling task force which so i hope we could just um you know put that off and talk about that a little bit more when i get into you know what else are we doing but um, at this point, you know, all the research had shown that by just making the policy mandated that it's by request only, you cut the use of straws in half. And then by saying that what you give can't be plastic, you know, is, is tremendous. Obviously the products, some of the products that are being offered are, um, are not what we'd like to see and we hope to work um, continue to work on that to get away from um, anything that's not fully biodegradable and compostable and, and, and organic, although that's not a, a, a good word to use, sorry. Um, and in addition, the other bills that we passed at the time were the styrofoam ban. So I don't know if you've noticed, but well, the law is you cannot sell and or provide food in styrofoam so they so styrofoam food containers whether it be the clam shell whether they um even your supermarket your target your walmart your party city cannot sell styrofoam plates cannot sell styrofoam cups cannot sell styrofoam bowls um and then takeout containers like the um 
uh, clamshell, um, you know, they cannot provide food in a takeout container that is styrofoam. They, you also cannot provide coffee in a styrofoam cup um, or any drink, a cold drink or any kind of drink. So um, there is a huge reduction in styrofoam and any, um, if you find anyone who's violating that, you should, they should be reported to our health department that's enforcing that. Uh, also styrofoam packing peanuts are banned in Suffolk County. Um, yeah, for, for um, packaging. They cannot, yeah, those cannot be sold. Um, we also had plastic water bottles. So um, in our parks, we have, um, we are working towards complete, you know, our major parks, um, our concessionaires. So we have Smith Point and Machut and Cupsaw, the big three um, parks that are on our beaches on Long Island and our concessionaires, we are working towards them being plastic free. Um, we have, uh, you know, made it so that there's refillable bottle stations at all of our parks. They're, they're getting installed, although COVID has slowed that down. All of our contracts with our concessionaires, as they renew, they will not be allowed to be using styrofoam utensils, styrofoam, um, I'm sorry, plastic utensils or plastic anything. Um, and I think that covers the bills there. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other, oh, so current situation, PPE and COVID-19. Um, we had, um, you know, obviously I continue to do cleanups. I have an app on my phone from the Ocean Conservancy. It's called Clean Swell. And I, at the end of my block is a small beach here and I clean up two, three times a week and I track what I'm collecting. And, you know, and so it really helps inform me and the policies we're doing. And I have noticed face masks. I have noticed, um, I am seeing paper straws um, in cups. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and f I still get the older uh, plastic straws, but um, hopefully as time goes by, there'll be fewer of those. Um, but we are seeing masks. Um, there is a fine now for people if they're, um, Dr. Spencer uh, wrote legislation that allows us to find someone if they're caught um, getting rid of PPE gloves or masks, uh, just th throwing them on the ground, which is happening in supermarkets, uh, parking lots across Suffolk County, um, which is disgusting and so disappointing, but it is happening. Um, I don't know if I've gone on too long here. No, um, not at all, you're good. Oh, good, okay. So next was the, just just quickly recycling. Um, it was, re it's really clear, you know, you talked about the extended producer responsibility I've been looking at cradle to grave, we call the cradle to grave responsibility for manufacturing. Um, I'm not sure it's something that the county can really tackle directly. I, I do think that's going to have to be um, pushed at maybe the state level, more likely the federal level, but it, it, that's the same idea from birth of the product till the end of the product the, the, the manufacturer should be responsible for it. By with a manufacturer making um, things that, that that they're not responsible for, how it's clean and and the poisons and toxins that are are within the product, um, you really um, you know said it so eloquently about um, how that's left um, on to society, a cost that's being bared by society, and others are profiting because they are not held responsible for what. Um, what, what they are creating and, and selling. And um, certainly we have a culture of convenience. So, so much of what I, I, I clean up because I do track it, you know, the small plastic pieces are the number one, but really close number two are um, plastic food wrappers because so much of what we consume um, is convenient, you know, individually wrapped this, um, whether it's little candy wrapped wrappers that I collect or um, small bags of chips, those kinds of wrappers. But, you know, everything has to be, it seems to be individually wrapped because we want it to be convenient. We want it to be quick. And our culture of convenience uh, is really showing up on our roadways and our, 
and our um, waterways um, clogging them up. I went paddle boarding the other day and it's one piece of plastic after another piece of plastic as, as you know, I paddle and it's, it's a really sad statement. I'm sure there's a lot we're gonna talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll have questions as well. Um, let, let's uh, roll into the uh, local efforts now that we're at that level, Debbie, if you could. Yes, hi. So um, both North Fork Audubon and North Fork Environmental Council have um, for many years um, attempted to uh, get the um, towns, our East End or at least our North Fork towns to um, ban plastic bags and we were always told oh um, well we can't do that because it needs to be done on a broader um, scale so as we all know um, the uh, state went ahead and did that um, but there was quite a bit of backsliding which I'm sure was absolutely necessary so that's okay um, but is there anything that could be done on the county level now? We are, um, as Mark mentioned, asking um, our membership to write letters to the DEC um, asking for them to reinstate the ban. Um, we feel that it is time to do that. Um, but we're hoping that, you know, perhaps there are other ways to put pressure on the, on the state or um, get our, um, you know, local vendors to, to um, really understand that this isn't a, uh, you know, a permanent um, solution now. So is there a way for the county to be involved with that? Um, sure. So I think, I think there was misinformation that was, um, let immediately, you know, after COVID um, spread, uh, the virus, you know, it was said that the virus would be carried on um, on the bags. And the truth is, it, st it, st it stays on plastic bags longer than others. And um, there was really no reason, I, I, I see no reason um, to have suspended, my understanding it's suspension of enforcement. Um, and it was until June 16th, I got an email from our, um, our restaurant um, person explaining that this, the suspension was until June 16th. I am not aware of it being extended, but I do have to say, um, uh, our work has been all COVID all the time, plus now police reform review, um, two big issues that have kind of taken over our, our focus, uh, um, even as chair of the Environment Committee, you know, our focus has been redirected on, on the COVID, um, you know, pandemic response and on um, the police reform um, work that we're, that we're taking on now. Um, and so if I missed that the governor extended that enforcement, um, I'm sorry. However, to the point, um, you know, when you're at a supermarket with a cart, um, if, if they don't, you know, my understanding was workers were a little nervous if somebody brought a reusable bag that that bag could carry um, the virus. But the, but the customer themselves can bag their own groceries into either back into the cart, push it out into the, um, into the parking lot. And if you have your bags in your car, you can fill them there or fill them with your reusable bags in the cart and just do it yourself. There's no need for the, the store worker to have to touch mm -hmm. a reusable bag if, if that is a concern. Um, and so, you know, I don't really see a reason um, for suspending that uh, enforcement. I think it was a knee jerk reaction to the concerns of the workers, which, you know, where there were valid concerns and we didn't know what was going on. Um, I think people just wanted everyone to feel protected. Um, these are frontline workers who were out there working when everyone else was staying home. They were facing the virus um, bravely so that we could have food. And so we understand, you know, kind of 
what happened, but now we have to look back and take what we know and, and think through how um, we can, you know, just ensure that um, we're not sacrificing the environment here when it's not necessary to do so. So I, I think that uh, letters to the DEC, letters to your local county legislator who can also pressure the DEC to, to begin that enforcement again, letters to the governor directly um, are important as well. He, he you know, needs to hear this. And, um, and, and I think letters to the store owners go the furthest. They want to be responsible members of the community. I would argue, especially on the East End, on the North Fork. Um, your, your store owners there are members of your community. They want to be environmentally responsible. They recognize, you know, you can, you can outline the options for their employees about how they never have to touch a reusable bag. And that can be on the customer. Um, but, you know, giving a, a, a single use plastic bag out should not be the answer. We're, we're just afraid that people are going to get so used to using the plastic bags again that there may be, you know, some resistance to <laughs> to going back to um, the bag ban. But yeah, thank you. There was, I'm seeing a lot of people bringing in reusables still. I, you know, true, so true. And, you know, people are passing money. So, I mean, oh, you know, oh. you're exchanging you know, either a card, maybe not, but but certainly money. Um, so in any case, um, I understand exactly what you're saying. And I and of course, we all want to protect, um, you know, everyone in the community. I think if, I think the best um, option would be to write, to, you know, start, I would start with your store owners. And I would then I would, you know, move on to all the elected officials, but I would expect, you know, with the enforcement agency, the DEC and the governor's office, um, top of the list. But I do think if you explain to the store owners the options, you know, um, that the, the customers can bag themselves if, you know, we are not allowed to give out plastic. Um, if, if the worker is uncomfortable, you know, the customer will bag themselves. The customer can put it back into their cart, bring it out to their car. Um, and right, that's right, just right. where we are now. And it, Good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have, I have a, another quick question and then we'll move on to everyone else's questions. But um, I know at one point um, we had um, legislator Krupski join us for a um, recycling uh, meeting that, that we hosted. And he mentioned that um, the county um, might consider um, having a central location for, um, you know, as a waste disposal facility. And I think that could go a long way, especially when it comes to all the different requirements that every town has for recycling. I mean, it's kind of crazy when you when you live in South Hold and there's there's a certain set of rules, and then in Riverhead there's another set of rules, and then if you go to Islip or Huntington or whatever, then there's another set of rules for recycling. I just think that if if there were if there if there was a goal to have a central facility that was a county facility, that that might be really helpful, or have consistent you know regs throughout throughout all the all the towns and and. Um, There's no question um, that recycling. I mean, I do want to go back to the 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 R's. It used to be three R's, but really it begins with refusing. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, refusing plastics, reducing use of plastics, reusing whatever you might have, and then recycling. Mm -hmm. Recycling is just not the answer, and we know that. However, mm -hmm. of the products that we do use, we want where recycling is available, we want to have 100% participation, right? And so... We haven't had that. And one of the one of the reasons is what you touched on that you know there are ten towns in Suffolk County, numerous villages. I should know the number. I don't. Um, villages in Suffolk County. We have the added um, global crisis of um, China, you know, getting out of the 
market of taking our, our recyclable materials. Um, our whole recycling industry had um, changed itself since the 70s that um, where at one point we had the facilities um, and it just, it, it didn't pay them enough to do it. And they allowed, China started taking the waste and it just, our whole industry switched to allow um, other countries to take the waste to, to do all the sorting and to do everything necessary um, to get a product that had value. Um, and now we're in a place where uh, there just isn't a global market for the product. It's contaminated. People, um, we are, again, uh, it's not that convenient to do it the right way. There's all kinds of plastics out there. People want to do the right thing, but wanting to do the right thing and actually doing it, there's a big difference when it comes to recycling. Um, I know I'm guilty of this. I had been, you know, before I um, became more aware of it, but as you all probably know really well, an aspirational recycler is someone who throws everything plastic into the plastic, you know, into the bin. Um, not just number ones and number twos or number ones, twos, fives and sixes, but everything, including the filmy bags and the, um, who knows, uh, <laughs> so much plastic that can't be recycled. And that's part of the problem, but it can, would contaminate as you know, it contaminates um, the product and it makes it very difficult to sort out and get what has value. And, um, and it could just, it, as you know, it can just make it all contaminated and useless. Um, and we'll wind up in the landfill anyways. And so we, I created, I wanna say the end of 2019, Suffolk County Recycling Task Force. Unfortunately, COVID got in the way of that. But the idea for this is we want to bring the 10 towns together. We want to talk about the current climate, the current market for plastics, one, twos, five, sixes, et cetera, the current market for paper and cardboard, the current market for um, aluminum and um, the current market for glass, which my town, town of Brookhaven, stopped taking glass at curbside and the sorting of colors was part of the problem and the market for glass and i think that there's um there's a possibility i mean i think that the covid this if there's any opportunity here um i hope that one of some of the response that's going to come out of um this crisis will be investment um, during the recession um, in the beginning of last century, um, you know, part of how they recovered from the depression, sorry, called it recession, the, the depression um, was a public works program and was investment in infrastructure. And so I'm, I'm somewhat hopeful. I'm not hearing as much talk as I'd like about it, but I am somewhat hopeful that if we get a willingness to do infrastructure investments that we could think about, you know, how do we solve problems? The governor talks about building back better after this crisis and how do we solve some of our community problems? And I would see an investment in, in a recycling um, plant, investment in composting, investment in, um, you know, we can solve numerous problems um, if we came together. And I would hope this is something I've proposed in our county um, capital project, you know, having a glass recycling plant, trying to um, find a way to encourage research uh, into how best to, you know, use glass for asphalt or um, or other building materials. How you know we need to we need to build the market for the product, um, and that would help to drive the whole um, system. It's complicated. We, you know, that that was that's part of the purpose of our um, recycling task force. Unfortunately, COVID, we haven't we haven't been able to meet. Um, had a few meetings, but not of the full group. So that's going to happen hopefully in the fall. And we'll get going on that. But I am if 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 you do have an opportunity of talking to your federal representatives or state representatives, and there's any talk of infrastructure investment. 
those are the kinds of investments we need, whether it's glass recycling, plastics recycling facility, um, one, you know, a place that's Suffolk County that all the towns can share possibly, um, or multiple, possibly multiple, um, composting, you know, facilities and, and, and places that the towns can share so that we can, we can work on this problem that when we're on an island is, is, is a no brainer to be working on this, but we really haven't, um, figured it out. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Don, do you want to move on to um, questions from the um, from the other members joining us? Sure. So, I think most of them are to Kara. Um, the first one is: I thought balloons were banned in Suffolk County. I picked up several at Iron Pier Beach last week. I, I don't. I mean, I'm not sure. It is a county law, is it? So. It's funny, my neighbor just texted me yesterday. <laughs> a picture of beds, because I'm constantly, you know, I'm constantly cleaning the beach and I, I bring a bucket and my picker and I go down and uh, I do find balloons all the time. We never banned balloons. We banned the release of balloons. So uh, it's really, it's uh, really see. not, um, wasn't effective. Um, we did, we certainly don't have it, it the feeling and of the majority of the legislature, um, you know, and hopefully we can continue to pressure because it's certainly something to think about. But that that was a step too far to ban balloons, you know, children and parties and not being able to have balloons. I think people felt that went too far. So the release, banning the release, is what we did. Um, and obviously, you know, how do you enforce that? It's next to impossible to enforce it uh, you know I'm still finding them everywhere um, I think we have to begin with an, um, a strong education campaign on this with the children um, you know starting in elementary school preschools talking about um, you know how damaging balloons can be if they're let go um, they don't you know find their way to heaven <laughs> they come back down and um and so uh i think there's some good children's books about this but but i think it, it, it certainly i know you know it's a party thing and i think that we have to start with kids and if they tell mommy you know they don't want balloons at their party that's a good start you know we i i certainly am willing to continue it it's just it's got to pass Right, so um, it's just not there yet. And so we need to continue the education. I think the education, I think the viral videos or images, uh, you know, are things that can, can push public opinion and can push, and that pushes um, political opinion as well, um, as we all know. I think, I think that's a really good idea though, to bring it into the schools, because I think if kids really knew, they would tell parents, I don't want them, you know? It would be the kids that were yeah. doing. I mean, it. I mean, it's happened with straws. It's happened um, with water bottles. Kids wanting them. You know, it helps. It helps. It's not the only thing, but it yeah. certainly can help. Okay. So the next question is: How do we write legislation that encompasses the unintended consequences or outpaces people working around the law? Um. It says, okay. it is, it, I that. guess what they're saying is, um, I, I'll, I'll, I can answer okay. that. Okay. Um, what my concern was, Kara, that um, we, we banned the styrofoam and the next week I went into a restaurant and came out with a PP5 clamshell. Uh, they're not right. compostable. And then I, I got another compostable from somewhere a week ago. And if you, if you read Braille really well on the inside, there was an embossed instruction for it to be recycled at a compostable facility. And I don't know that we have that. I don't know if that's along the lines of the anaerobic digester or if it's, if it's a different, uh, a different uh, kind of infrastructure altogether, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, so the styrofoam um, was not just, well, it's all not just environmental, right? It's all somehow health related. But the styrofoam, the polystyrene, 
um, being a probable human carcinogen, um, especially when it's heated, um, the leaching of the chemicals into the food. It was incredibly important that um, you know, hot food didn't go into styrofoam right. clamshells in my mind. And so, you know, it's a big win, but instead of going to the cardboard, you know, boxes um, that are readily available, they, I, I now have seen the plastic clamshells that are, you know, whether they're one or two or not, you know, um, it's not what we wanted. Um, we certainly, um, I'm willing to revisit that uh, eventually. Um, and I think we have to, I think, I think there has not been the backlash that everyone envisioned. There were, you know, tales of woe, kind of like when smoking was banned in bars, there restaurants. Go. There was, oh, these restaurants are going to go out of business, you know, because nobody's going to come here because they want to smoke. And, and now, could you Didn't imagine? Happen. Yeah. Could you imagine? Having to sit next to somebody smoking inside. Well, think um, about the, well. You, nobody here on this call is old enough to remember people smoked on airplanes. Yes. Yeah. And if you did that now, you got the federal marshal already taking you off the plane. Right. So right. the social norm has changed. Um, I, I still see doctors and nurses smoking outside of hospitals, and and health facilities. So it really hasn't gone the full uh, hasn't gone the full range that we need. Um, I don't know why that's taken so long. It was 1961 that the Surgeon General said it's a bad thing. So you're talking about, you know, 70 years to 60 yeah. years already. Um, and I'm not sure we have that kind of time for a lot of things. Right. Well, and so my point here was that I'm actually surprised at how little pushback there was um, from the industry you know, maybe they're just, ha you know, um, there might not have been enough enforcement again, you know, let us know. But I, I, I have not seen a, a, a styrofoam clamshell, which I'm really happy about. I have not seen, you know, styrofoam plates on the shelves, styrofoam cups. Um, and if you do, you know, we have to report it and, and they'll get a, you know, they get a warning the first time if they haven't been warned yet. But um, it's it's important. I, I think I think we made a huge. It's a huge movement, but there are al alternatives that are plastic, and um, we're working our way towards that. Um, we didn't, you know. It's you have to go as far as the other nine votes at the legislature uh, will get let you go, and so um, you know we worked really hard. We got. Um, a set of bills that I, I believe make a huge difference and there's more to do, there's no question. I think we have to continue to educate the consumer um, and in addition to making choices for themselves at home, if they let their favorite restaurants know, um, you know, what they would prefer, you know, I don't want to see a plastic cup with water. Um, uh, you know, I'm not going to drop your glass. <laughs> Just give me a glass. <laughs> and yeah. um, I think that, you know, I think that goes a long way for, for um, business owners to know their customers could walk. And I would argue, especially now, your, you know, your buying power, um, you have a lot of buying power right now. Yeah, um, I have another question from Margaret. She wanted to know, um, are other states banning styrofoam or is it just, do you know what other states have banned it? Yeah, so there, I don't know. Um, I do know it's happening. <laughs> um, I don't know which ones, you know, I, uh, probably at the time I could have, I could have rambled off four or five of them, but um Right now, I can't. I apologize, but you know, um, I think, unfortunately, the pandemic. Um, we were we were kind of on a roll with the plastic reduction. Um, I felt like there was momentum um, in the environmental community. There was momentum for making change. There was momentum for, you know, another thing when you're talking to kids and you're out there and you're talking to high school children or young adults, teens, um, 
I think it's important to talk about career choices and, um, you know, when we talk about how important science is and material science and, and um, you know, finding how, um, how to do, how to use sustain, you know, sustainable products and, and, and get them into the mainstream. Um, there, there are ways to do it and there, you know, there, I know that um, the younger generation really cares. And so they can also turn that passion into careers that help further um, this. And so whether it's a sorting machine for plastics that, you know, um, or, or how to turn glass into, you know, into something that um, can be used in building materials or, you know, it's so that, that we have a market for, um, you know, bricks yeah. can, maybe can be made out of it or whatever, or, or if we needed to crush it down so fine that we, when we have to fill a beach, you know, who knows? <laughs> um, who knows what it could be used for? But um, I think we have to be thinking, at, um, really have to be thinking about that, creating, give it value, have it be usable so that, you know, it, it just, it doesn't get thrown away. It doesn't just wind up in the incinerator now because I saw somebody asking about the, um, we really have a problem on the island with our, uh, our um, landfills closing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a town <laughs> representative, so I don't, that's not my area of expertise. But I know Brookhaven, where I live, um, you know, our town landfill is closing and, um, you know, we have the incinerators and we were, t we do doing trade for ash and, um, but, you know, our landfill won't even be able to take that. And, you know, we were um, sending trash off the island on trains and in trucks. And this is just not, not what we want to be doing. And this is, this is something that, you know, infrastructure investment, if we could, we have to figure out our waste and our trash problem. And, um, we're even getting, as you've heard, the dumping. I'm a chair of parks. You know, I've been working on dumping, yeah. um, and whether it's the big companies from the city that are trucking waste from construction, demolition debris from buildings in the city, trucking out here and dumping in our parks, or using as uh, contaminant contaminated fill, which I think I discovered in my village here um, alongside the road with a recent road paving project. Um, it's just awful what's happening and it's even happening. I found park in Brookhaven town where it appears it was too old. The DEC and the DA couldn't um, tie it to anyone, but it appeared that a home improvement contractor who did small jobs would dig a hole in the park and dump um, siding, roofing, um, you know, um, um, carpeting, rolled up carpeting, laminate floors, mm. you know, dig a hole and would fill it with this demolition debris and then cover it up. And there were dozens of holes and mounds throughout this park and it was just awful, just awful. And if it happened there, it could be happening all over. And it's just, we have to have a solution that, um, again, the whole uh, cradle the grave idea on these products. You know, Carrie, you mentioned um, the, the idea of solving multiple problems at once. And, and there's a concept of multi-solving that I've been working with for a while now. Uh, one of the almost too obvious waste stream items is food waste. And as I understand on a, on a general number, it's a third of our waste stream. And it could easily be extracted. And, and it won't buy us some time because the landfills are going to close. Yeah. Whether they're full or not, I think it's a timeline. But um, we've been working for um, quite a while on, on pulling food waste out for a lot of different, um, different purposes. Composting out here, of course, on the North Fork. But um, as far as uh, anaerobic digestion for methane, for fuel, I think we've got a lot of options that are very, very easy to pick. Yes, this came up, you know, in the, um, as part of the recycling task force that I began, you know, one of the main questions we were going to answer early on, but again, we haven't 
gotten in, was are we going to tackle the issue of composting and would it be part of the discussion and would food waste be part of it? And I had met with um, Long Island Cares and some of the supermarket um, chains about you know how do we redirect and I had been looking at legislation I hadn't gotten um, too far but I would be interested to talk about that another time if, sure. if, um, if you have ideas on what absolutely I know there in other countries there are requirements um, you know for um, food distri you know each each um, stage of food distribution um, for waste and what to do with it. So mm -hmm. there's so much that could be done there. Yep. Sure. Yeah, I'd uh, like to uh, follow through um, later on. Yes, thank you. So uh, maybe one more question. Mm -hmm. um, Debbie asks, how can we as two environmental organizations that coordinate a plastic reduction and elimination program help Suffolk County's efforts? I think I think it's important, um, you know, to support the good actors in the community. Um, find ways, whether it's a you know North Fork Award to the most sustainable this you know restaurant, North Fork Award, most sustainable mm -hmm. vineyard, whatever you know. Well, they have that, but you know, um, yeah. you get the idea. You know, find ways to recognize um, the good actors. Um, and express your dissatisfaction. You don't have to publicly shame, you know, first, second, third time, but, but, but let, like I said, your business is, is worth a lot right now. And, and let those know how you feel um, when, when they're either not following the rules or, or if it's all disposable they're using, even if it's legal, um, there are better ways um there are more sustainable ways and the business owners should know that that's important to you yeah. as their customer especially if you're a regular yeah yep. that's true yeah debbie did you want to close out no i have a question oh go ahead can i have a can i ask a question of Thank course you. um i'm curious about kara are you only about the environment and if so how did you guys have to, you start having to work with the police reassessment thing and the COVID thing? I mean, I know government is, I mean, you know, it just sort of gets me like you probably have just been redirected and you have to do this as opposed to sticking with where you're supposed yeah, so, to be, right? Well, obviously, so I chair the environment committee. Um, I also chair the economic development committee and I sit on public safety. I sit on the health committee. Okay, I get it now. Um, yeah, like so. Um, the main, you know, main purpose of county government is public health and public safety. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are our major functions. Um, on the east end, so the big piece of what Suffolk County government does, you know, we have our Suffolk County Police District, which obviously is not the North Fork and not the South Fork, um, not the five East End towns, but we have the sheriff, um, we have our two jails, the police department, probation, parole, you know, so that's a huge piece of our budget. It's a huge task of our responsibility. Public health is everything from water quality, um, you know, we, we monitor beach, um, beach, the water and beaches for swimmability for, you know, whether, um, and we monitor drinking water, we monitor all the different sewage treatment plants all over. Another public health piece that we have is restaurant inspections. And that's how we wrapped in some of these restaurant rules. But really the purpose of our restaurant inspectors to go into a restaurant is to make sure you know, the temperature in the refrigerator is low enough to keep food fresh to make sure that they're cooking the meat to the high enough temperature to make sure they're washing their hands and everything's clean and um, the water that they use to wash the dishes reaches the temperature necessary. So, you know, public health and then obviously um, pan, um, communicable diseases um, piece of our health uh, department is very active at the moment. Uh, so. You know, public health and public safety are, are the main functions of county government and um, parks is obviously, you know, a big piece and our environmental protection. We have our land acquisition program. That's that's the largest 
um, item we, you know, we really work on from an environmental perspective is the all of the land preservation we do, both open space and farmland um, development rights protection. Those are huge pieces of our, our responsibility. But, you know, some may say that plastic reduction is really not our charge, but uh, we do we do find a way to get in there and that's it's important to both public health and and you know from a tourism perspective you know litter and trash and and um, all all that we've spoken of it's it, it's certainly something I as chair of the environment committee thought was critical to work on and, mm -hmm. and we right. did and we still continue to you know, I think the, the language of the uh, New York State or the uh, federal bill, rather, calling it plastic pollution and really getting people to see it as a pollutant rather than just an annoyance. Right. I think we've got to escalate that language and just keep pounding it away. Right. I do think if people had to pay, um, you know, per weight when in the trash mm -hmm. collection, mm -hmm. I, I, that'll probably wind up coming. I think people will be thinking about it more. So right now, the town comes, they take almost whatever you put out there, and yep. um, at least where I am, I know it's a little bit different. I have my aunt lives in East Marion, and I think it's a private hauler that comes. And maybe they do pay, um, but uh, in that way. Um, but um, you know, I think if that happens to each town, and and you begin to pay for how much your garbage can weighs, you'll think more about what's going into it, and um, Yep, yeah. pay to play. Absolutely. We, we pay for our electricity. We don't pay for our water. Or, in, we do, but we don't. <laughs> $45 for three months for yes. seven people is not paying for water. Is not paying for water. Right. So there's, that's a whole nother discussion. That's um, coming. <laughs> right. But the, but the lady next door has nine cans out twice a week, and we have one can once a week. So, right. yeah. You so. know, it, to me, so much of this comes down to education. Like, I don't know a lot about government, even like what you just told me. That was wonderful to hear, you know, about what your roles are. Um, but um, what was I going to say? Like this whole thing about the landfills are closing. I didn't know that. You know, and, and I'm an informed person, but not half as informed as I should be. But most people don't even know what I know. And to me, that's what motivates. I mean, if people know, hey, man, there's nowhere to put this stuff. You know, like somebody, I was on, on an elder care. We have a thing. People, actually, we looked at the story of plastics today, which was fun. Um, but um, somebody said, I wish that these dairy places um, would make yogurt and we could come with our own containers and bring our, you know, and get our own yogurt because these yogurt containers are number five and there's so yeah. many of them. Yeah. And of course we'd have to be, you know, clean and sanitary, especially now because of COVID, but you know, we could do that kind of stuff. Well, they used to do it with milk and there's, yeah. So there's, there's definitely a, like shampoos, there, there's a yeah. whole movement to have bottles that you bring and you refill. And you can, there, there's, I looked at this too, although it was difficult about the, the takeout containers can be something that is a permanent container that you, you know, you return to the restaurant and then you, you know, you get a clean one the next time um, and it gets washed and right. There's, you know, same thing with, it's hard, it's hard, it's, 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 but it, you know, in the denser cities, it's easier to do some of those things in cities, but you think of the milkman, I mean, they used to deliver milk in glass bottles and you'd put the, the, you know, they'd rinse them out, put them back, and then the milkman, when he brought the next set, would take the old ones. And so there may, I, I see that coming back to an extent, to an extent. Well, it's everybody having to change their attitudes and not want everything so convenient. And, you yeah. know, we don't need to have everything wrapped up and, I mean, come on, people. I mean, but anyway. Ugh. I know. It's <laughs> started. It's, it really, we don't need straws. Who needs a straw? I never use a straw. I know. You know, it's like, so change your thing. You don't need a straw. Why do you need a straw? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. The straw there police. Is, Thanks, Margaret. Just so <laughs> but you know, it's like education or making people think because where are you going to throw that thing? You know, right. and, and if all they have to do, I before my straws press conference, I had it was two <laughs> summers ago, I think it was. Funny. 
I had my nephews up from Florida again, pre-COVID, two summers ago. And uh, the day of the Straws press conference about the bill, um, I said to them, okay, you guys, run down to the beach and I'll give you a dollar for every straw you find. And they wow. ran down and within 10 minutes, they found 20 straws. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm telling you, it was like, you know, they're there if people just saw it and it's just, you know, I don't know if it's where we, you know, where the cove at the, at the end of the block, it's like, it just catches or something. But it's, it's every everywhere. day, every day I could probably find 10 or more straws. Um, and I clean three, four times a week. So it's not like, you know, it's, they just keep coming in. Yeah. Can I ask one more question and then I'll stop? Oh. On clean swell, can you put in that you found gloves yes. and masks? No. So there are some things. I have a running list of things that I think they should add because it's it's very comprehensive what they have. Yeah. But they don't have, you know, obviously this is new, so they should have masks and gloves. They should have lighters. I think it's odd that they don't have a, its own category for like a lighter. Um, they don't have a category for drug paraphernalia. They have personal care items, um, you know, tampon things, and but but the, the the syringe falls into that same category. And I think there should be. Um, they don't have a difference between a plastic bag and a Ziploc bag. So I'm always like, you know, when I find a Ziploc bag, it goes into the category of plastic bags, which isn't really right. Yeah, it's not the same as a sandwich bag. It's not the same as a as the grocery bag, and so there's there's so there are I have I've written them emails. I've I've yet to get them on the phone because I do wish they could either customize for a locality. And if there's a group, I was talking with the um, Save the Sound. Um, I was on a webinar the other day. Sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> um, and they were going to work with them about a customized um app um you know for locally um there are those little i find them all the time um there was a sewage treatment plan in connecticut that released millions of these little they're called we call them wagon wheels i don't know if they've oh, washed up on any of your beaches they're yeah. the little they're the little round white plastic and it looks like a wagon wheel and they're mm -hmm. a little thick yeah um and i find them all the time Oh, I also find hunting shells, you know, from yep. duck hunters. Mm -hmm. yep. That's another thing that you can't, you know, there's not its own category, but I feel like that would be good to, good to have its own category. Do they so have fishing line in there? Is yes, fishing there are fishing, there? there's fishing gear oh. and balloons, you know, there's, there's containers and, plat, you know, it's about probably 20 plus categories. But if you look at it, it's Ocean Conservancy Clean Swell. It's a free app. Um, and you can log it in. I wear it. I, I'm a runner, and so I have this thing which holds my phone on my wrist. And then I'm as I'm picking, I just punch in. <laughs> it makes it really easy. But I feel like I'm accomplishing something by 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 reporting. You know, not just the cleaning up, but I but I report the data yeah. into them. Yeah, yeah we do. We we do use that when we do the um okay. we do the International Coastal Cleanup Day. Yep. And we do try to record everything, but you're right. There's a lot of things that my son was actually just saying this today that the shells are huge here because people duck hunt. Yes, yes, and um, and I found that teens and younger kids they they get more into it when they know they can use an app, you know, to, yeah, right. <laughs> to record exactly. their, instead of the yep. clipboard and the paper and the pen, you know, having to have a second person. Yeah. It's like right. kind of right. cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, easy <laughs> and fun. Game. Those are the clues. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, Deb, you want to wrap up? Yeah, so I just would like to say um, we hope that this can be an ongoing dialogue with you, Legislator Han. Um, I love talking about this stuff and, and thinking through solutions. So, um, uh, can I, should I give you my email? Does everybody have it? Maybe when you send out, you know, send them my email, send them my cell phone sure. number, we will, whatever you want. Yeah, yep, we will absolutely. Do that for sure. And, and I mean, if there are ways that, that we can be helpful, I mean, in terms of educational outreach, I know not-for-profits, you know, do, um, 
you know, are, are able to get the word out to our membership and to other people, um, you know, about different efforts that you're involved in. I mean, if there are ways that we can help leverage some of your efforts, um, of course, show up when, um, you know, when some of your legislation is being reviewed and, and you. you know, needs really to be supported, we'd be happy to do that. So thank let's you. keep the dialogue going. That would be great. And so um, again, thank you so very much. We know you're very busy. Things are pretty crazy all over, and um, especially on the um, on the uh, government level. So thank you so much for, for spending the evening with us. Thank you. Thank you for all your efforts. And thank you very much, Cara. Thank, thank, thank you, you, everybody. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Thank you. I wish more people came. <laughs> no, we're going to get this out. It's okay. We're going to put it up on the YouTube channel and rebroadcast and all the rest of it. So it's out. Thank you. Great. Take Thanks. care. All right. All right. Thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night.